a sunny spring day in Dallas, Georgia. It's almost 11 a.m. on April 24th, 2022, and Norfolk Southern train number 373 is passing a Herzog multi-purpose machine on the siding here. NS-373 goes from Macon, Georgia to Chattanooga, Tennessee. It also works Inman Yard in Atlanta. This train is long, more than 13,000 feet according to radio traffic I heard. They need all the power they can get and have two DPUs or distributed power units in the middle of the train. One of those, a GE ES44 AC, is in Fairmex's new paint scheme. A locomotive from a Mexican railroad is not something we see too often here in Georgia. The train makes it by this location, but around 10 minutes later, it was stuck. Three ACs will pull with those three. Uh, that's what I got online. Uh, I, I told them the second one wasn't working before I left in, when, and they said we were good for it, and we didn't make it. I was in Dallas getting some shots of this odd-looking Herzog train, but after hearing that on the radio, I decided to see what was going on, but seeing the head end of the train was going to be a challenge. It was somewhere in the woods. I would mainly be doing a lot of listening, listening to my scanner to figure out how the railroad would get 373 moving again. As I drove to the crossing where I thought the head end of the train might be, I started to hear more about the situation. Okay, I'm guessing we're going to have to have some help. We're going to need another engine here. And a few minutes later... There wasn't much to see once I got to the crossing here at McPherson Church Road, but you can definitely tell there's a grade here. Now, hearing one of the engines needed water, the railroad decided to call the fire department to fill it up. Uh, we'll, we'll call them, I guess, once we, uh, once you get tied down, just let me know. Okay, I, I can let you know when I get to uh, McPherson Church Road, and then you can call them so they can just pull up and do their thing. So, basically, the plan was to uncouple the engines from the train and bring them to this grade crossing. Of course, the conductor would need to apply handbrakes on the freight cars before that could happen. While I was waiting at the crossing, the Paulding County Fire Department showed up. It was around noon now. Shortly after the fire engine pulled in, the plan changed again. The conductor would need to disengage those handbrakes. Uh, I'll tell him to knock them off. He probably already had about 20 on there. But uh, you're going to have 22 in, come a couple to us, and uh, push us to Braswell Road Cross. That's right, that's right. All right. The fire department eventually left, but there was a southbound train headed my way. NS-175 was on the other track here and would have to stop and wait until 373 was out of the way before moving on. This train goes from Chattanooga, Tennessee to Jacksonville, Florida, and also works the yard in Macon, Georgia. After a good bit of waiting, the helper engines had arrived, and it was finally time to push 373 over the hill. I'm pulling. Let's go. Sure enough, here they were, rounding the bend. Looks like those old GE-9s behind the lead locomotive are showing their age in more ways than one. While 373 was on the move, the plan changed again. Sounds like they wouldn't need the fire department's help after all. All right, uh, mechanical is going to check out your DPDF pressure mill room, but uh, we're not adding water or anything like that. Over. The DP engines are fine as far as I know. Uh, it's just my second engine don't have any water. Okay, uh, yeah, well, uh, but, you know, and, uh, The 
strength of modern freight trains is pretty astounding. Like I said earlier, this one was more than 13,000 feet. I believe 13,444 feet was the exact length I heard over the radio. That's two and a half miles. Now, before the train got moving again, I was looking for other places to record it. During my search, I passed some of the freight cars in the consist and could hear a hissing noise coming from somewhere on one of them. It sounded like air was escaping. I reported what I heard to a Norfolk Southern employee who I saw in the area. You can probably hear that hissing noise as the cars pass by. Anyway, here's that exotic locomotive we saw earlier. Finally, here were those manned helpers pushing at the end of the train. After the train and its helpers passed, I drove 11 miles northwest to the crossing on Braswell Road in Rockmart, Georgia. At this point, it was time to uncouple the helper locomotives and move on. But with those locomotives so far back at the rear of the train, the engineer of 373 needed the dispatcher to relay the message. It was around 2.30 now, and time for one last shot of this train. And here's one more look at that Fairmax locomotive. There's no doubt, it was working hard today. After all that, let's hope the crew didn't have any more issues on their trip. Norfolk Southern, my 